We've recently shot a music video and as I often do on this channel, I afterwards do a full behind the scenes and breakdown of what equipment we used, etc. And usually before I start recording these YouTube videos, I think about everything that I want to say and I break down the entire video chronologically. And when I did that, what I usually do in the shower, with this music video, I started to come up to the lighting part and then I felt like when I kept talking and talking in my head that the lighting section about this video would probably be about 20 minutes all by itself. So instead of doing a full behind the scenes breakdown of this music video, I decided to just do a lighting breakdown for this one. So I will talk about what kind of lights we used in every shot, why we used them and how we lit everything. And more on that after the intro. So this was for a newcomer band and this was actually their first music video and honestly I really liked the song. The entire project was rather low budget so it was Bell and Me shooting and just one day overall. And I will link up the video right here so you can check it out before we actually start everything so you know what I'm talking about when I'm breaking down all the lighting parts. So now that you've hopefully watched the entire video, let's start chronologically from start to finish and go over every shot or basically every scene and how we lit it. So the first shot where he's walking through the factory was by far the most complicated one. So let me start breaking down what we did in this shot. All I did was turn on the light switch because we just used available light and I think that the tubes illuminating the factory were actually pretty cool and gave us a cinematic look so I didn't really do any external lighting at all. For the next shot we did use external lighting. So let me start with breaking down the framework. So this is their basement where they actually do all their band practices. So overall we wanted to get some kind of moody feeling so we didn't really want it to have it too high key and we also wanted to induce some color contrast. And overall it was a little tricky because the ceiling height was really low so we couldn't really use any overhead lighting and that actually made the entire thing a little bit tricky. We also didn't really have a lot of space to left and the right so we actually chose to have one of our lights actually being displayed right in the set and as for a band a basement that actually made a lot of sense because a lot of bands actually do have some moody color lighting in their basements so that actually worked out well. As for our key light, I used a Godox VL150 with a 90cm parabolic softbox and a grid on top. As the ceiling was so low, I decided to bounce it off the ceiling. So I placed the entire thing off camera and then just pointed it directly towards the ceiling, put it at around 100% for all the wide angle shots and that gave us overall a really nice and soft look to it. As for our second RGB light that I had placed in the shot, that was the Razer Light MC200 and I had it at an orange red kind of tone and as I've already said, I placed it directly into the scene and actually made it somewhat of a practical light. And I used this as a rim light, but also as a mood light. And I think that it gave the whole scene a really kind of good vibe. As for the last light in this scene, I used our NDCine R1 RGB pocket light and I already did a review about this and I'm taking this light with me everywhere. And in this scene, I used it to create this color contrast that I was talking about earlier and I set it to somewhat of a teal color to offset the orange kind of red color on our Razer Light MC200. And for this, I put it way in the background behind one of the speakers. And even at 10%, it was still too bright and kind of illuminated the entire background. So here I wrapped it into the fusion material until I had the brightness that I wanted. And this was our setup for the entire wide angle shots. And then when we did some close-ups of all the band members, I actually just moved the Godox VL150 a little closer, toned it down and just placed it right off camera when shooting the close-ups of each band member to get us an even softer, nicer light. But that's pretty much everything for this scene and it was really simple. Just three basic lights, one softbox, one RGB light that was pretty big and one small RGB pocket light in the background to get a little bit of color contrast. And the next shot is one of my favorite shots and I immediately envisioned this shot when I first saw the location. I wanted to have this single lean against one of these big laundry machines and create a light that is really top heavy to have a lot of shadows in the space but also create a color contrast and make it a little bit more interesting by placing some RGB lights in the background. As for the key light, this was also the Godox VL150 with a 90cm parabolic softbox. And although this actually gave us a really good end result, it was a pretty big pain in the ass to set up. 
The biggest mistake we made was we didn't bring any heavy C stands with sandbags. And that was due to the reason that the C stand we had at the time didn't fit into our travel bag. And since I bought a new C stand that actually does fit in there. But for this, I only brought some cheap light stands with some cheap boom poles and they weren't strong enough to actually handle the weight of the softbox as well as the Godox VL150. So even though he was sitting low on the ground, it was still very hard to place the light source exactly above him. And for this, we actually used two of the other band members to hold it the entire time so that it wasn't in the shot. And since we used a slider movement, we started from a somewhat of a mid shot and went closer. The close up really wasn't the problem, but with the shot before that, we actually could see the light stand in the shots if we didn't really move it way off frame. And the further away we were, the heavier it got on the boom pole. So we had both band members hold the entire thing for the entire duration of the shot. And that actually was somewhat heavy, but it worked out well in the end. So here's definitely my first pro tip. Whenever you do any kind of light rigging, invest into really good C-stands and sandbags. So that is not only way better for safety, but it's so much easier to rig up. And the Godox VL150 with such a big softbox is actually somewhat heavy, especially if you put it on a boom pole and extend it out a little further. So now for the background. To go with the same kind of consistent look that we did earlier, we went with the same orange and teal for the background. And there was a room behind him. So there I just used our Razorlight MC200, placed it on the ground and just basically illuminated the entire room just with a teal lighting. As for the other light, there was one of these laundry baskets and all I did was I took the NDCine R1 light, put it into this basket and just illuminated it in orange. And the really cool thing is that the basket had holes in it. So it gave this a really interesting look and I really kind of like the result of it. But here again, I can't stress enough how important one of these small RGB lights is. Probably get two or three even, put it in your backpack and take it onto every shoot. And I will obviously link this in the description below if you wanna check it out yourself. Another cool bit in this scene was that there was still the exit light illuminated in green and it also added to the scene and now I had an orange and teal and kind of green look to it, but I kind of liked it. Our next scene was our harbor sunset scene and that we did light really simplistic. We had a really strong backlight setting with the sunset setting right behind him and we only used a golden reflector to spill a little bit of fill light onto his face again to not have him completely in shadow. And this golden reflector was enough to A, give him a bit of a catch light and B, not have his face to be too dark. Our next scene was also at the harbor what when the sun had already set. And this came about really spontaneously and wasn't even planned for in the first place. But when we were setting up from our sunset shoot, I saw that the light was really nice in the background on another location and that the sun was bouncing off one of the factory buildings and I really wanted to get one of the performance shots in there as well. But since we were losing light very quickly, we needed to rush. And since we didn't have any light set up previously, we had to set up the Godox VL150 with the softbox as soon as possible. And with the nice photo softbox, that was so easy because that softbox actually unfolds so easily and we were able to not miss any of the lights and shoot about two or three takes without having to lose any of the lights. And it worked out very well. Since most of our shots in this music video and the overall vibe was really moody, I really really wanted to have it placed on the left side of my talent and not have any fill light. So I went for a very contrasty feeling on purpose. We also had this really cool location of this abandoned train car and I don't really know what it was for but it was just standing there and it had this really cool LED lights up top and that was all we used for this shot and we didn't really need any reflectors or any additional lights to make this look even better and I really kind of liked the end result. Our last scene of the night was the outdoor walking scene and for this we utilized the Godot ML60 and I already featured this in another behind the scenes that I will also link up here and this is a really cool small and portable light because it has a battery compartment so you can use it with two Sony MPF batteries and that makes for really nice shots when you have a subject that is moving a lot. So here I also used it with a small softbox and a grid and I had one of the band members actually walk alongside me when I was walking backwards filming my talent and this way we actually had a small 
blocky light that was just following my talent. And that actually made for a really nice organic light and kind of really tied up the scene very nicely. And this is a light I can also recommend 100% for everyone who sometimes need to shoot moving subjects because it's really small, it's light, it's powerful and with the softbox and the grip on top, it actually makes for a really nice and soft light. So that's it, that was a lighting breakdown of the music video that we shot recently. And I think for a low to no budget project, this is basically a really good lighting setup where you don't really have the time or the people or the budget for light to set up some really huge lighting setups. And you can actually make a lot out of these couple of small and inexpensive lights. And again, as I've already said, I will link all of them down in the description below so you can check them out. And if you're interested, we also color graded the entire music video with one of our LUT packs that you can also purchase on our website. So make sure to check them out as well. So this was the first lighting breakdown I did on this YouTube channel. And if you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below because maybe I can do more lighting breakdowns of other projects in the future. And if you still want to see the full behind the scenes of this music video, what cameras we used and how we shot everything, also leave a comment down below. And if you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. Make sure to subscribe, follow me on Instagram, and I hope to see you on the next one.